Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Our guest speaker today is from England, the Honorable Mazar Khan. He is Da'i for Islam and IT consultant who has been involved in Islamic activism for over 30 years. His work with Hizb ut Tahrir for the unity of the Ummah has spoken at numerous rallies and conferences all over Britain on various pertinent topics affecting the Ummah. He has presented workshops, seminars, and assemblies to assist the ulama in the UK on how to respond with the challenges of gender-related gender issues. We call upon the Honorable Mazar Khan to present his talk. Shukran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem. Ashadu anna ilaha illallah. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu amma bad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So today, insha'Allah, I'm going to address this phenomena, the world over, of the imposition of secular liberal values on the world. And one thing I'd like to say at the onset, is jahiliya is not knowing what is the truth. Jahiliya is not knowing right from wrong. And when a society or a nation is unaware of the correct Furqan, the correct criteria to determine right from wrong, that society is in a state of jahiliya. The world today is led by the secular West, imposing their liberal, secular values on the world, the East and the West. And thus, they have rendered the whole world in a state of jahiliya. So this is what I'm going to touch upon today. And I'm going to touch upon the fact that it is only this ummah, the khairan ummah, the Ummatul Wasat, the final Ummah, who can counter this and who can give the correct Furqan and lead humanity from darkness into light. So as I said, the world today is led by the secular capitalist West. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you live in Cape Town or if you live in Cairo. It doesn't matter if you live in Manchester or you live in Mecca. It doesn't matter where you live because the West want to impose their Furqan, their criteria for determining right and wrong upon you. And this Furqan is liberal secular values. So it's no surprise that in the land of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we find pop concerts, we find bikini beaches, we find rape parties. Because according to the liberal Furqan, the objective in life is to enjoy yourself and to maximize enjoyment and benefit. What in philosophy is known as utilitarianism, maximizing the good, what they determine as good. It is no surprise that the LGBTQ plus I is being imposed upon the world. And according to them, man is sovereign over his body. Whether you are male or female, you can be a man or a woman. They disconnect the gender from the sex. And they say your gender is a social construct. Just because you were born male, you don't have to be a man. And just because you were born female, you don't have to be a woman. You are sovereign and you can decide what you want to be. And it's no surprise that we see the rich getting richer and the poor wallowing in obscene poverty because liberal secular value, values has made greed a virtue. And they consider greed 
is what powers growth. So you should be well aware, my friends, that the problems we face in the world today is being caused by these values because the secular West has taken leadership and this is the real religion by which they govern mankind and impose it on the rest of the world. So when Europe used to be governed by Christianity and when Europe distanced itself from religion, they decided we will decide what is right and wrong. We, man, human beings will be sovereign. We will not refer to God. We will refer to ourselves and decide what is good and what is bad. So God will not interfere in our social life, in our political life, in our econo economic life. So when they talk about freedom, what they actually mean is not that nobody has any rules. No society is free from rules. No society believes in doing whatever you want to do. When they say freedom, what they mean by freedom is freedom from God. Secularism means freedom from God. If you want to worship God, go ahead. Go to your church, go to your masjid, go to your temple. But when you live in life, God is not going to have any role in that. And that was the secular West believes in, and that is what the secular West wants to impose. So now they want to create entertainment zones not too far from Medina. If you want to pray, pray. And if you want to party, party. This is what they believe in. So the problems in the world we face today is not because of Islam. The problems we face in the world is not because of Islam. It is because of these secular values. Liberal secular values in economics means free markets. It means poverty. This is because of secular values, not Islam. When you have liberal secular values in society, it results in a popula population decline. If everybody is here to enjoy yours in the, themselves, you don't need to get married. And if you get married, you can get married to the same gender, the same sex, it doesn't matter. You don't need to have babies. And you will find, my friends, that across Western Europe, their populations are flatlining or declining. So what does that mean? That means there are more older people than there are young people, which means they have to allow immigration. And you all will know better than most people around the world that Europe, the DNA of Europe is racist. They don't like brown and black people coming to their country. So it gives rise to racism. Due to the influx of immigration in the West, it gives rise to racism. And you will find in Britain, in America, in Italy, in Scandinavia, in France, there is a growth of right-wing nationalist politics. And this is because their, their populations are declining, they need immigration. Why are their populations declining? Because of liberal secular values, which gives rise to racism, because of liberal secular values. Taxes have to increase because fewer people are working to look after more people. Why are taxes increasing? Because of liberal secular values. Whether you believe in it or not, whether you believe in, in, in it or not, you will be affected by it. If you live in the West, you will be affected by it. And in politics, that is governed by secularism. And they put equality before justice. They say everybody is equal. That doesn't lead to justice. Can you imagine a heavyweight world championship, ch championship boxer in a ring with a 16-year-old, 50-kilogram youth and say, fight. You both got equal rights and equal rules. It's obvious who's going to win. It's obvious who's going to win. They say, but it's fair. They're both fighting by the same rules. And this is what happens in politics. Every secular liberal democracy in the world is governed by the rich and the powerful to protect their interests because they've got equal rules. If you're already rich and powerful, you can use that for your benefit. And hence, the rich get richer, the poor get poorer, the world over. It doesn't matter if you're in the UK. It doesn't matter if you're in Pakistan. It doesn't matter if you're in South Africa. 
You see this inequality because they, same, they share the same political DNA, which is rooted in secular liberal values. And I said at the beginning, we, the Ummatul Wasat, the Khairun Ummah, the final Ummah, we have the correct Furqan to determine right and wrong, to know what is right and wrong. And if you refer to anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will lead to problems. It will lead to contradictions. It will lead to chaos. So for example, in the West, in Britain, they use state propaganda to brainwash the children into believing man can get married to man. A woman can get married to a woman. A woman can become a man. And a man can become a woman. And they said it's perfectly normal. And when you question it, why is this okay? They don't refer to Allah. So they have to find another Furqan. They have to find another criteria to justify it. And they will give you four or five different criteria. And I've actually prepared a presentation about this, which I presented to the ulama in Khauten province over the last week in a number of schools and madrasa. So we don't have the time to go through it, but I'll give you a couple of examples. One of the criteria they will re refer to in order to justify this is they will say nature. How can you disagree with nature? Nature is natural. Nobody can disagree with nature. That's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made things. They will say that certain animals are gay. I've seen this in the schools. I've seen the video clips. They will show you lions, which are gay. They will show you giraffes, which are gay. They'll show you fishes, which are gay. Now, we know animals are not gay. But let's say, for the sake of argument, animals are gay. Let's say, yes, the lions are gay, the giraffes are gay, the fishes are gay, the monkeys are gay, they're all gay. So what? So what? Nature is not a guide. You know, a cat licks itself clean. That's natural for a cat. But it's not natural for a dog. A monkey picks the nits of another monkey and eats it. You know that, you've seen it. It's natural for a monkey, not for a lion. A lion kills the cub of a lioness in order to mate with the lioness. It's natural, but not for a dog. So if the nature of one animal is not a template for another animal, how can you say that what an, the nature of an animal is befitting for a man to follow? Subhanallah. How can you say that? And from a legal perspective in Islam, from, from an usuli perspective in Islam, nature has never ever been an usul to determine right and wrong. Whichever madhab you follow, we follow the Quran, the Sunnah, Qiyas, Ijma, and whichever other usul you might follow, depending on the madhab you follow, nobody says nature is an usul. It is natural for hair to grow on certain parts of our body. The Sharia says, clean it. We don't say it's natural, let it grow. It is natural for a baby boy to be born with foreskin. We do circumcision. We don't say it's natural, leave it. Nature is not an usul. And animals are not a guide for human beings. We don't follow animals. So you see the contradiction here. Do you see those people who say homosexuality is natural? Do they do istinja in the toilet with their tongue like a cat? No, they don't. Do they go and kill the animals of the, the babies of another animal to breed? No, they don't. Do they pick the nits of a monkey and eat it and say it's natural? No, they don't. And this is what happens if you don't refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you make up your furqan it will lead you to contradictions and problems. They will say to you, oh, we can decide for ourselves, we can use aql. No, you can't. 
No, you can't. If human beings were able to determine halal and haram, legal and illegal, without recourse to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there would have been no need for Allah to reveal from the heavens the book that we have. There would have been no need to send messengers sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to show us how to live because we could have worked it out ourselves. But we are not capable of doing that. And I'll give you a simple example. When you ask somebody who supports LGBT rights, why can Jonathan get married to Stephen? They say, oh, the consent. Jonathan says to Stephen, would you like to marry me? Stephen says, yeah, kabul ki, yep, all done. Married. Then if you say to them, if it's about consent, if consent is your furqan, if consent is the thing that legitimizes the act, why can Stephen not get married to a cow? They'll say, ah, you see, the cow can't consent. Stephen can, Jonathan can, David can. But a cow cannot consent. That's why you can't get married to a cow. Okay. I'm going to demonstrate to you now logic. You can use logic to make halal haram and haram halal. Let's make this halal according to them. In every legal court around the world, murder is a bigger crime than rape. If you commit murder, you will get a stronger sentence than committing rape. When Jonathan, Stephen, David, Michael, whoever they are, when they kill a cow to make a T-bone steak, sorry, let me rephrase that. When they murder a cow to make a T-bone steak, when they murder a cow to make beef burgers, when they murder a cow to make biryani, did they ask the cow for consent? When they murdered the cow, did they ask the cow for its consent? No, they didn't. So if you can kill it without its consent, then why can't you marry it? Why can't you make nikah with a cow? And this is the problem. If you don't take guidance from the heavens and you want to make up your own guidance, it will lead to contradictions. It will lead to problems. And we see that in our society today. So as a human being, it is, as a Muslim, it is our job to demonstrate that nothing, nothing is worthy of following except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We say, la ilaha, there is nothing worthy of worship. Nature, la ilaha. Science, la ilaha. Logic, la ilaha. Western philosophies, la ilaha, illallah, 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 except Allah. So when you want to talk about LGBT, it's not enough to tell your children it is haram. No, you need to demonstrate to them that the furqan they follow, the reasoning they provide is false and without any truth. And that will demonstrate to a human being that you know what? Nothing can guide you except Allah. La ilaha illallah. And this was the methodology of all the anbiya. Whichever society they went to, whatever munkar they saw, they would refute it, then call them to Islam. Close the doors of munkar and open the doors of haqq. So as I mentioned right at the beginning, the entire world is rendered in a state of jahiliyyah. And since 99 years ago, when the Uthmani Khilafah fell in this month of Rajab, 99 years ago, Muslims have not been in a position of authority. Islam, sorry, Islam has not been in a position of authority. And the position of authority has been given to the secular West. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't permit that. Allah does not permit the disbelievers to have authority over the Muslims. The world today is regulated by liberal secular values. Not Judaism, not Christianity, not Hinduism, not Buddhism. When we Muslims get involved in interfaith, that's a sideshow. Even the church itself today is regulated by secular values. 
Even the church today accepts same-sex relationships. That's the real problem that we need to engage with. And it's the duty of this ummah, because this is the only ummah that can lead humanity from darkness into light. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam, he said in the Quran, وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةِ and your Rabb said to the angels, I am going to place on the earth a Khalifa. Khalifa is Allah's representative to look after the affairs of the earth. Allah says to Dawood in the Quran, Ya Dawood, inna ja'alnaka khalifatan fil ard, fahkum bayna nati bil haq. Ya David, Ya Dawood, behold, we have made you a Khalifa on earth. So judge between them with justice. And it was the responsibility of every Nabi to enjoin the good, to forbid the evil, and had to have authority over mankind. Abu Huraira radiallahu anha narrated, كانت بنو إسرائيل تصوصهم الأنبياء بنو إسرائيل were ruled by prophets. Whenever a prophet died, he was followed by another prophet. There will be no more prophets after me, the Prophet said. There will be no more prophets after me, but there will be khulafa and they will number many. And that is what makes this ummah unique. The responsibility of enjoining the good, forbidding the evil, and having authority, which was only granted to the prophets after Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that responsibility, that obligation, that duty was given to us. And it's due to our negligence of having to look after the world, having given that up, that the West has taken that leadership and caused chaos and fitna in the world in the areas of society, economics, politics, and all other facets of life. So what makes this ummah unique is the, res the responsibility that we take from the Anbiya of enjoining the good, forbidding the evil, and having that authority to do that. And this, of enjoining the good and forbid the evil, can only be done effectively if you have authority. You have heard the hadith when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man ra'a minkum munkaran. Whoever from amongst you sees a munkar, fal yugayiruhu biyadihi. Let him change it with his hand. Fa in lam yastati' and if he is unable to, let him change it with his tongue. We've all heard this hadith. We neglect something from this hadith. The Prophet said, if from amongst you you see a munkar, change it with your hand. That's the first order. That's the default position that you need to change it with your hand. Hand means authority. Not that if I see something, I can go and do what I want. I don't have authority. I'm a lay person. It means Islam needs to be in a position of authority to enjoin the good and forbid the evil. If you don't have authority, then use your tongue. But the default position is, the first point is, you must have authority. Islam needs to be in a position of authority. And we don't have that now. 99 years have passed. 99 years have passed. We have the correct furqan. We know right from wrong. We are in a position to guide humanity, but we are not doing that. And it's a vital issue for us today to reestablish this and to assume the rightful position that was bequeathed to us by the Prophet He bequeathed that responsibility to the Khulafa Rashidun. And who is our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He is Rahmatul Lil Alameen. 
Is he not? Is he not? Rahmatul lil alameen. Mercy to the all of the worlds. Islam is a mercy to the Muslims. Islam is a mercy to the non-Muslims. Islam is a mercy to the animals. Islam is a mercy to the plant life. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can balance the rights of all these things and maintain it. It is beyond our ability to do that. Only the deen from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can create an equilibrium between man, animals, and the environment. Hasn't capitalism ruined the environment? Hasn't capitalism abused animals when they're doing the industrial farming in America? Hasn't capitalism reduced man into not even knowing what a man and a woman is? You know, in Scotland, just last month, a man committed rape. Before he went to court, he changed his gender. He went to court as a woman. They found him guilty of rape. What do you do now? They sent him to a woman's prison. Why? Because he's a woman. He says he's a woman. He's a woman. I'll give you one guess what happened in the woman's prison. Exactly. That's exactly what happened. So they had to take him out of the woman's prison, and now they had to put him in a man's prison. And that created a big problem now. Hold on a second, it's a woman. Why are you putting a woman in a man's prison? Because you know. He's not a woman. He's a man. And they create all this kind of confusion that exists in their societies. So this issue is a vital issue. It's your obligation, it's my obligation. And this is what makes this Ummah special. We are special not because we are just Muslim. It be, is because we have taken the responsibility of the Anbiya. And in one hadith, it is narrated, Antum tawafuna sab'ina Ummah. You are the last of the 70 nations. Antum khayruha. You are the best. Wa antum akramu alallahi azza wa jal. You are the best and you are the most honored in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh We say, we say shukran to our honorable guest, Sheikh Mazhar Khan for that beautiful khutbah Just a Mazhar, Mazhar brother <laughs> Very humble man um, Anyways, for that beautiful khutbah highlighting many important global topics about the dangers the West is causing us, we ask Allah to guide us to stay on the straight path and love our lives in accordance with the deen, inshallah, ameen. Ta'adhan this Friday will be led by Hamza Kasim and Abdullah Palika. Shukran wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is before the adhan, just to remind the brothers, inshallah, our Laylatul Mi'raj program will take place immediately after Maghrib Salah, inshallah, between Maghrib and Isha. And uh, the lecture will be conducted by Maulana Ahmed Suleiman Katani, inshallah. So everyone is welcome to join us for tonight, our Laylatul Mi'raj program after Maghrib. Uh, males and females are all welcome, inshallah. Can we just ask the brothers to stand in Fadlik? There are quite a few people standing on the outside. And just uh, move a bit closer to one another, inshallah. Make sure that we keep the gap straight, uh, the line straight, and the gaps closed, inshallah. And especially on your left hand side as well, there are a few people standing that side as well. Just try to fill all the gaps. Jazakumullah khairan. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله
أشهد أن محمد رسول
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي رفع سما بغير عمد وبسط الأرض وأرسى فيها الجبال وأجرى فيها الأنهار وقدر فيها أقواتها وشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له هو الأول والآخر والظاهر والباطن وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه نشهد أنه قد بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغم وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين فجازه اللهم خير ما جزيت نبيا عن أمته ورسولا عن رسالته وارض اللهم عن صحابته الطيبين الطاهرين وعنا معهم إلى يوم الدين وبعد عباد الله تعالى أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله سبحانه وتعالى قال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال تعالى يا أيها الناس إنا خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم إن الله عليم خبير بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم وهداني وإياكم من الطريق المستقيم يقول رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم التائب من الذنب كما لا ذنب له وتائب حبيب الرحمن فتوبوا إلى الله واستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله أحمده سبحانه وتبارك وتعالى وأشكره وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فيا عباد الله اتقوا الله سبحانه وتبارك وتعالى قال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون واعتصموا بحبل الله جميعا ولا تفرقوا فيا عباد الله صلوا على رسول الهدي محمد خير خلق الله فقد أمرتم بذلك في كتاب الله قال تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما 
وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من صلى علي مرة واحدة صلى الله عليه بها عشرة اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد ورد اللهم عن خلفائه الأربعة أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن الصحابة والسلام تابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم عز الإسلام وانصر المسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام وانصر المسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام وانصر المسلمين اللهم ألف بين قلوب المسلمين ووحد صفوفهم وأصلح قادتهم وجمع كلمتهم على الحق يا مولانا يا رب العالمين اللهم آمنا في أوطاننا اللهم آمنا في أوطاننا اللهم آمنا في أوطاننا وأصلح حيمتنا وولاة أمورنا وجعل ولايتنا في من خافك واتقاك يا مولانا يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وادخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا مولانا يا رب العالمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعد والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفخشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروا على نعمه يزدكم واسألوه من فضله يعطكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون قوموا إلى الصلاةكم يرحمنا ويرحمكم الله Your left hand side, brothers. Left hand side, the pick up there on the left hand side. Can we just ask the brothers to move a bit faster, inshallah? On the left hand side, brothers. Straighten the rows, heels on the line, stand shoulder to shoulder. Allah Akbar. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله 
إن الله خبير بما تعملون ولا تقولوا كالذين نسوا الله فأنساهم أنفسهم أولئك هم الفاسقون أولئك هم الفاسقون لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة هم الفائزون لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار عزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون والله الخالق البارئ المصور له الأسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله العظيم التواب الرحيم الذي لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم ونتوب إليك ونسألك توبة ومغفرة هداية لنا فإنك أنت التواب الرحيم 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تباركت ربنا وتعاليت يا ذا الجلال والإكرام سمعنا وطعنا هفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير اللهم عنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم اكفنا بحلالك أن حرامك وأغننا بفضلك أمن سواك اللهم إني أسألك علما نافعا ورزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا اللهم أجرنا من النار واللهم أجرنا من النار اللهم أجرنا من النار وأدخلنا الجنة مع البرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين اللهم يا رب الناس أذهب البأس في أن الشافي لا شفاء إلا شفاء شفاء لا يغادر السقم وقال تعالى وننزل من القرآن ما هو شفاء ورحمة للمؤمنين ولا يزيد الظالمين إلا خسارة سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام المرسلين الحمد لله رب العالمين